It's time to end tonight's foolish theatrics. Right now, you have no captive audience. Let every word is sacrificed be carved in ice, and with this nation, endure for all time. In the name of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa, we will seize authority from the gods. Absolute peace. Such is the gift from the Tsaritsa, such is Her Majesty's benevolence. Now you rest in this coffin, encased in layer upon layer of ice. But Rosalina, I promise you, your final resting place shall be the entirety of the old world. When the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew. But for the sunset of my brother's son, it rains down right. How oh, now, a conduit girl? What, still in tears, evermore showering? In one little body thou counterfeits so a bark, a sea, a wind, for still thy eyes, which I have called the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is sailing in the salt flood, the wind thy sighs are raging in thy tears, and they with them, without a sudden calm, will overset thy tempestuous body. How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? Ay, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed? Unworthy as she is, they have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom. Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud I can never be what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How, 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 chopped logic, what is this proud, uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, and uh, you not proud, mistress, many of you, thank me no thankings, no proud me no prouds, but fellow your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out you green sickness carry on out you baggage you tallow face Fie Fie are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience, but not speak a word. Hang the young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to church on Thursday or never have to look thee in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. Wife, with scars, so does bless that God has lent us but this only child, and now I see that this one is too much, and we have a curse in having her out. If my mother did not get her way, if she was unable to achieve the very things she knew that were hers as of right, and if she was not afforded the recognition her various good works merited, the fury would be ignited. People would be ignored, favors withdrawn, blockades erected, the systems removed, and a steely demeanor exhibited towards the transgressor. Nobody was immune to this manifestation of her cold fury. Friends, family, the vicar, shopkeepers, publicians, police officers, and acquaintances all knew the force of the famous Tudor ice storm. It worked, my goodness it worked, and most of all it worked on my father, who found himself the recipient of so many bouts of silent treatment, he might have wondered if he had fallen deaf. Every time he pleaded and begged for a different outcome, but my mother was a glacier, a vast sheet of ice that could not be moved by anyone else, and was moving at its own pace and its own direction. And if you resisted, you would be eroded and subsumed into this edifice. I marveled at its power. How magnificent was she that she was able to have a grown, principal man, such as my father, almost on his knees after begging her to stop the silence to speak to him. This was a man who ruled the roost at a private school as headmaster. He was relegated to the role of a first-year infant when it came to dealing with my mother and her icy fury. 
Regardless if tempter sent or tempest cast you ashore, I just ask you to stay with me now and forevermore. For you I will dance through hell, fight my way through fire and ice, and I know it couldn't even be considered sacrifice. I know that in your gaze the thousand nights aurora flames, and this fire I can't extinguish from my spire and my veins. When you're with me, my heart seems to be a lot less broken, and I feel like even silence leaves no words unspoken. Others may as well come and try to feed me dirty lies, but it isn't me they like, but the reflection in my eyes. For I'm not part of any crowd, so unlike all the normies, that oil the jaws of war machines and feed them with babies. We were born in the shadow of death, raised in grief and hate, born to blame only our own selves for this accursed fate. But we gave each other reason to continue to live, and gained the strength to forget what we could never forgive. We just tried to live our life, always searching for the light, hoping one day we'll wake up and it will all be alright. We say that we're born to live with the wonders of all times, and yet the world always remains ignorant to our cries. We know we were born to dream of that one blink of an eye, during which we'll be sure we'll never have to say goodbye.